Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Astrothi, and this is a Sunday bonus show. How's it going, guys? <clears throat> Good to see you. Uh, I I kind of have two parallel objectives. Uh, I'm, what I want to do is, since yesterday we successfully finished my entire track from start to finish, doing only com combat sites, what I want to do today is flip it up and go into the same storm and do some hacking sites just to see how that goes. Uh, and while I do so, I don't have like as much time as last time, um, only a, a couple hours. So, but what what I want to do is explore uh, a little bit about Sancha Kavaki, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, and more importantly, or and hopefully conclude uh, with a little bit about the Triglavians. Uh, relationship to Sancha Kavaki or Sancha nation and uh, some tinfoil theories that, that spring out of this. So cause Sancha not only is the main dude for this event, uh, he is the, the Sancha's nation is really good at being right next to everything. Right? Like, they haven't really been in the limelight since incursions, but uh, they've always been right there in a really weird way, right? Like, just on the sidelines. So I think it's important if something like that is laying low, but always there, that we, uh, we identify that and look at it a little bit. So to begin with, while I head back to the storm, I'm going to play a couple of videos. Now, conveniently, because uh, incursions happened to be at a time that they really, really wanted to show off uh, their new avatar system, they we got some really good trailers at that time, uh, including the CDIA file for Sancho Kavaki. And I've, I've asked over and over and over again for more CDIA files. And there actually is a CDIA file for Garistus that shows up in the game, but uh, I don't think I ever got the audio version of it. I've asked multiple times. I thought they said that they had it, but then I, maybe they did, couldn't find it, or it wasn't there. They thought it was there, but it wasn't. So, unfortunately, that's not there. And I really wish they would make more. But we do have Sanchez, and it's very uh, handy that way. So we're going to watch that. And uh, then I have couple of hold on what do i have uh oh it's just the incursion trailer uh and then we have the information on universe and then we're going to explore uh the triglavians relationship with them and i'm going to talk a little bit more about current events with uh with mr kavaki and his nation and more importantly uh those who are not in kavaki's nation but are still in sancha's nation not in, but not under Master Kavaki. So all of that, uh, we will begin with the uh, CDIA file that was released during Sancha's incursions. Uh, this was in 2010. Uh, this there was corresponded with this. This is one of the most active lore event times in Eve history. CCP drop bear took a lot of time, and uh, there was. Uh, Sancha would attack different areas using wormholes and then kidnap people from planets. And it was this ongoing thing as Sancha made these different attacks. In fact, if you go, if you do incursions now, the rats are all named after systems. Those were the systems attacked by Sancha Kavaki during those initial phases. Um, but either way, uh, I don't remember where I was going with that. So let's go get the video going. Hold on. I default to the to the to the video. Maybe. Where are you? Hold up. <laughs> are you there now? No. Why are you, why are you doing this to me? There it is. Whew. Close one. I should probably not just dally in an Edencom 
fortress, though. All right. Okie dokie. Got it. Uh, so, this is a Sanchez Nation's, um, like, EV Universe article, but we want this one. Let me just double check it's good. It is not. Get that a little bit up and that a little bit up. All right. Like it. All right, here we go. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Ha! Ah, I almost did the thing. Oh, seven seeds. All right, now, now my, uh, you, you'll be able to hear it. Here we go. Nearly two centuries ago, an industrial mogul named Sancha Kuvaki built an empire as an arms manufacturer during the first Galente Kaldari War. Hailed as a cultural messiah, Kuvaki drew millions of colonists to his domain by promising a utopian alternative to contemporary society. However, Sancho was also secretly using his vast resources to fund cybernetic experimentation on humans, turning them into slaves loyal only to him. When the great empires learned of these practices, they joined forces to end his regime. Through their combined efforts, Sancha and his minions were hunted down and driven off. Those few sympathizers who survived settled in the Stain region, far from empire borders. But years later, groups of Sancha began short, well-organized incursions into secure space. Using advanced technology, they were repeatedly able to sneak past defenses and make surface landings on sovereign worlds, abducting millions. These unfortunate souls were doomed to become part of Sancha's twisted hive mind forever. Sancha Kuvaki has brought his war back to the empires with a vengeance, directly challenging the resolve of Capsuleers. While none can say with certainty what his agenda might be, he seems determined to re-establish his so-called promised land for good. So there you go. That is what Concord has to say about Sancha Kuvaki. Um, but if you dig into it a little bit, go into the lore article about it, um, and even the stuff at the time... One of the things that's interesting about it is that they've always cast doubt on the return of Master Kavaki. Uh, they've, so, one of the things about all of this is that the entity that is now known as Sancha and in charge of the entire na most of the nation may not actually be the original Sancha Kavaki, but may be someone or something else pretending to be Sancha Kavaki. Um, that has now taken over the hive mind. That's point one. Um, although there, there is pretty good reason to believe it is like the original Sancha or Master Kavaki, although t theoretically he was killed or really went into hiding really well. So Sancha was, uh, Sancha's nation was formed in, was it 30, 33, 34 YC? Um, and what it, what he did was, um, he was an arms manufacturer, as it says. He brought all these people out to the promised land, enslaved most of them. Concord went, take them out. He's now gone. Now, suddenly, uh, in like 2006, six seven, the nation, as in like the, the remaining uh, you know, people that were uh, part of the Sanchez thing, um, begins increased activity. Including attacking uh, some people, so it uh, there was a lot of questions about this, and and then eventually emerges Master Kavaki. He does the incursions. Um, the important thing here to note, though, is that all of this happened in parallel to the uh the wormhole story right the uh apocrypha event basically 
what happened, the, a little bit about the physical structure, about the uh, lore of the game. Uh, if you think about it, in 2002, they, uh, when EVE Online was released, they assumed that the game was going to last about, you know, four years. If they do, if they, that was what they hoped for. Uh, they've already gotten about five times that. Um, but so if you look at the early stuff, it's all very deep, like just descriptive of the universe oriented stuff like Fedo. And there is the prophecy of Macapper, which pretty much is like, was the, the doomsday story that they would initiate when it was time to, you know, end Eve. Well, how's it going spoons? By the time, uh, by, by 2006, four years after, um, four years after they, the release of the game, and therefore, like, when they, their wildest dreams about how long Eve would last. Hey, Grendel! Oh, 70 you, my friend. Uh, sorry, I keep losing my train of thought. Um, when they, uh, yeah, by 2006, they realized that it wasn't going, you know, Eve wasn't going to end in four years, you know? So they had to do something. Oh, no. Is everything okay? Hey, uh, do you, you know Lord Cal of Kauai? He now also owns a hostel in Hawaii uh, that is open to, uh, specifically to, to, like, the gaming community. You should, uh, we, I should get you two linked up. That sucks, though. Oh, man. I really should get you guys hooked up. Kurik Arnuk, thank you for that. Oh, seven, sir. Very kind of you. Oh, sevens in chat. You get all those emotes. How How's things going, Kurik? How goes the war front? Ah, you know, I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, probe and talk at the same time effectively. That's okay. I'm just kind of dinking around anyways. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just DM me. Um, <laughs> nice. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Aider logo. Okay. So, jumping back into it. By 2006, they realized that the game wasn't going to just end. And it, it may go on for some time. And so they needed to figure out, like, what they were going to do with the thing. And so the writers at the time, CCP Drop Bear, CCP Abraxas... Um, and a few of the others um, got together and they decided they worked things out. And what they did was they took one of the, uh, the, the towards the beginning of the game, they had they released the Cosmos missions. And as part of that, they basically made a new ancient race for each empire. And they didn't explain where they came from. They're just mysterious in their zones. So you had like um, it was Takmal for uh Amar Sleepers for Kaldari, Talakan for Mimitar, and Yan Yun for uh for the Galente. And like each of these were, you know, super mysterious. But in 2006, they decided that they were going to work with the Sleepers and and develop that storyline. So they they actually specifically said that they were going to do like an extra, like, a whole bunch more Chronicles, a uh, higher cadence of Chronicles for four years, right? So for the next four years, 2006 to 2010, we got a ton of Chronicles. And that's when we get all of those Chronicles that really tell stories and kind of have some cryptic stuff to them and, uh, like, the, the Black Mountain stuff and all that stuff. Like, if you want to know why there used to be so many more Chronicles back in the day to now... Uh, that's one of the reasons why was that there was actually this concerted effort because basically they decided they knew the arc that they wanted it to go. Um, and they, they wrote a Bible that basically specified what is happening in this universe. Um, now it's worth noting that 2006 to 2010, if you've done the math right, the middle of that is 2008, which was the release of Apocrypha. So, Apocrypha, Wormhole Space, and the, the puzzle box of, of Wormhole Space was basically the climax, the, the apex of that arc. So, if you want to think about it, there's two years leading up to uh, 
Apocrypha and two years run, uh, running off of Apocrypha. Uh, and that's the cycle. And then after that, now you're hitting 2010. So that leads us into incursions. And, and so CCB Drop Bear uh, used incursions, so, or mostly, uh, this is a kind of speculation, but uh, seems to have used incursions as a mechanism to kind of maybe tie up some loose ends, uh, give some more clues about um, some of the stuff. So, because the incursion stuff wasn't just incursions. He had a wormhole generator, which leads to all kinds of questions. Um, there was a thing about an awakened infomorph that kind of appeared, and nobody really figured out what, anything about that. Um, d the, there was a, uh, during one of the attacks... Somebody sent camera drones through the wormhole and got back images of Sancha's nation uh, arrayed out in front of the Prosperity Vault in Jovian space. Uh, we received message, a message, the, actually the final message that we ever received from the directorate, uh, the Jovian directorate, was um, that Sancha has been removed from Jovian space. But now we know that the Jovians are gone, so it's very possible that Jovian uh, that uh, Sancha could have reoccupied it or whatever. Um, okay. So, it it seems as if Sancha had some sort of relationship to the Apocrypha stuff. Um, and specifically, he seemed to be on the cutting edge of wormhole technology and, and what, is, you know, what is happening with these wormholes. Um, it is largely... Uh, it is, I guess, assumed... We believe that he got the wormhole generator from his invasion of angel space. Uh, so shortly, the, uh, like in 2007, 2008, I think it is, there was an incursion of Sancha into angel cartel space, I want to say. I think it was. Uh, yeah, it was. And then I, I always try to find this record, and I can't, I can't find it when it's time to. But there was actually like a news report that basically speaks about a, a mysterious deal, likely an arms deal, that occurs in Angel Space around that time. And then, even though Sancha is pretty successful in his attack, immediately the nation with, uh, withdraws mysteriously. So, that was never fully explained. And then a couple of years later, he shows up with a portal gun. And we know that Angel Space is basically the, 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 the husk of the first and second Jovian Empire. Um, so, yeah. And we also know that the Joves have a portal device similar to that. Uh, in fact, uh, in Inheritance, Venal calls Sancha's portal device crude by comparison. Um, is there any other notes up to this? Oh, and of course, all of this was confirmed by the fact that when the, um, how's it going? Uh, by when the shatter wormholes happened, when Caroline Star occurred and we got access to the shatter wormholes, there were several shatter wormholes that had Sancha's Nation members in it, in, including a destroyed uh, mothership. So one of the assumptions was that, especially after he got kicked out of Jove space, what he did was found a way to get to a place in wormhole space that our wormholes, like the standard wormholes didn't lead to yet because they weren't high enough energy or whatever. Like, if you think about it, the the first explosion, the Apocrypha event exposed like the external part of the uh, of wormhole space. The, the rooms, as it were. Whereas the second explosion, uh, the Caroline Star event, exploded it seems to have exploded like the internal rooms, the, the nexuses, the connection points between the rooms. Um, because we find a lot more like epicenters and stuff like that in uh, the shatter wormholes. So, and one of these is in Sancha's uh, wormhole. So it would seem as if Sancha was using the old static gate networks somehow... Uh, or the wormholes, you know, using that with, in conjunction with its wormhole technology, or however he's using that that wormhole to attack out from, until the apocrypha event or uh, Caroline Star, which like blew up that whole facility. 
Um, so that is Sancha up to then. Now, I'm trying to think if he's tangential to much else during that time period. I don't think he really shows up much during the Drifter stuff. But he re- he starts to show up in one, with, the, with the Triglavians. Um, and the weird thing about it is, is that the lore has always pointed to the fact that Sancha is very important to the Triglavian collective thing. But yet, we've never actually seen any hard evidence of what's going on with that. So, this, from now on, is mostly speculation. We're going to work with... Um, uh, oh, actually, before we do this, I'm going to play one, one more video, which is going to be... This is Sancha's message to us from the Incursion trailer. So, this is, this is just to kind of get in the head of this Ma- Master Kuvakai. Master Kavaki, whatever. Whichever it is. Why aren't why aren't you? There we go. So overall cheery fellow, right? Good dude. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can actually probe this down fast enough. I I doubt it. I already got distracted. But uh okay. So the next time we hear about Miss uh, Master Kuvaki um would be during the uh, lead up to Project Nova's uh, alpha test. So, at, in uh, October 2018, we're going to go with that, uh, they r- revealed Project Nova for the first time. This was, th- this was like basically going to be the initiation of the alpha test. You know, within the month, they were going to start the alpha test, then the beta test, and it was going to come out. It was going to be great. So they revealed it, and people were playing it, and the feedback was terrible. That overall, the game was fine, but uh, the, the, the precept was kind of weak. And part of it, or the whole, but the story was that Sancha Kavaki, you'd, fight be, you'd be fighting Sancha's zombie uh, troops on the outside of... Um, uh, on the outside of uh, the hulls of ships, like you'd be using mag boots to kill, uh, to like crawl on the outside of ships to fight um, K- Kuvakai's guys. Ah, uh-huh. yeah. I'm gonna go to the next system. Um, and there was reports about 
attacks in the southern shipping lanes of Moulton, between Moulton Heath and Prism, I want to say, uh, that was a, at first a, um, sp- speculated to be Sanchez Nation. Um, and specifically, they were boarding ships. Um, so the original idea, or the original, and this was all preliminary reports, so we actually never got this confirmed or anything, but it, it always was like, and it's suspected to be Sanchez Nation. Um but this is why we actually see the formation of Aegis, uh, the Concord Division of Aegis. Um, and Aegis is, in char- uh, is ran by a person named Provost Marshal Katia Valkenir. Katia Valkenir. If you put a pin in that name. She, she comes up later. Uh, <laughs> so, but of course, the Nova game is completely scrapped. They pull it back into the drawing board and they redevelop it away from being a, a, like a, uh, an arena first-person shooter type game. More towards... We, what, what I believe is more towards something like a Destiny 2 or, you know, whatever. Uh, the, the, the one hint that we had was like more RPG elements. More, you know, so like some sort of scope... Uh, and we haven't really heard anything about it ever since, besides it's revolutionary and amazing, and they talk about it every once in a while to the media. But never name it or anything like that. At any rate, so uh, Project Nova actually had a trailer. Oh, man. I, I should find that? Hold on, real quick. Uh, Nova trailer, Eve. Yeah. Not really important to the Sancha thing, but I, I, I think this is interesting for prosperity. Or posterity? Posterity. Posterity. All right. So this is the trailer for Nova when they thought people were going to like it. Wake up. You're not dead yet. You were immortal once. Brutal and merciless. A symbol of death and bloodshed. Now you lie broken. Betrayed. Forsaken. I offer redemption. The great darkness casts its shadow. Gathering its forces. Harvesting humanity. Be our deliverance. Rise. All right, so uh, yeah, great game. Glad glad it came out. Good reception. Did well. Sold millions of copies. All right, so that was uh, the Project Nova thing, and you could see the person talking is Cassia Valkenir, and uh, you know there's there's the Sancha Nation dudes um, in those clips. Okay, so uh, but when uh, the when uh, when that whole project got kind of shelved and they pulled it back, they didn't get rid of it completely. Um, and the pieces of the plot that had happened, the introduction of uh, uh, Operation Green Magic, the, uh, you know, Cassia Valkyrie, all that, uh, the formation of Aegis, all that stuff is in the game or is in the, the, the story. So then, a few months later... When uh, the world arc was first seen in uh, in the construction room in Abyss, and uh, I think it was Uriel, it was either Uriel or Makoto or one of them, uh, went to the forums and uh, the in-game forums and demanded Concord explain themselves. Um, their response, uh, or sorry, he calls out um, what's his name, Oveg Dursk, the head of Sorrow Division. You know, angry, literally the angry Concord guy, right? Um, they they ask for him to answer for it, 
But what we got was a response from Cassia Valkanir that said that Case Red Gamma, which was the drifter sleeper or uh, or the drifter, yeah, the drifter sleeper threat, um, has now been folded under her purview, uh, under the purview of Aegis, along with Case Green Magic. So that was odd. But then when invasions began, uh, it was Aegis that took the lead in defending against the Triglavian Collective. And a lot of it was, if you pay attention to this lore, uh, like the stories that were coming out, the world news and all that stuff that was coming out during invasions, there was a lot of like the boarding of stations, the raiding of supply depots. There's a lot of foot soldiery stuff, which is where Aegis really comes in. Um, meanwhile, or then eventually... They did the, they passed the new taxes, what was it, a year, two years ago now? Whatever. Uh, when they increased taxes the first time. Um, and that was justified because it was to fund, basically fund Edencom. But specifically, it was to replace lost and damaged uh, infrastructure to the Triglavian Collective and to research advanced personality backup systems. For uh, for use in war clones, which are foot soldiers, and war clones keep coming up in uh, these in the world news as well. Um, Mortis Legion war clones were in uh, Rarvas, etc., etc., etc. Either way, so uh, get, bringing this back home a little bit, we also see that there's an interaction between Sanchez Nation and uh, or at the same time, we get introduced to a new skin. There's a skin that gets released for the Sanchez Nation um, called the True Deliverance skin. And it's red. And I will look it up as soon as I'm done hacking this. All right. Uh, true deliverance. Let's see if I can spell. Yeah, I spelled it right. All right. So this skin. For too long you have been allowed to live in fear. For too long you have thought, if the nation comes, we will run, and we will hide, and we will be safe. Let it be known that there is no such thing as safe. There is only deliverance or annihilation. Recording recovered from the station wreckage, wreckage, speaker identified as former true citizen Cornelius Sedic, now leader of the Vamoksha Chorus. So uh, I am kind of going over this a little bit out of order, but uh, the Vamoksha... So now we have a new... There's a new play in town, right? So we Master Kuvaki is only maybe actually Sancho Kuvaki. And now around the time of invasions, we see our first evidence of the Vomoksha Chorus. Now we see our second note of the Vomoksha Chorus several months later. They show up a couple of times in the world news, and it kind of implies that several of the in, in, incursions that were occurring were actually Vomoksha Chorus incursions, not, not Master Kuvaki's incursions. Uh, at the time, we didn't actually know if there was a difference, uh, if he was just like a leader within their group, but it does say former true citizen, so that's really weird. Uh, well, we got confirmation in uh, during the Dragonar Blitz event because it was the Vamoksha Chorus specifically who was going, uh, who was coordinating with the Templus Dragonars for something. Um, so at the very end of the Dragonar sites, which were filled with Kaldari rats, which would be the you know the Templus Dragonar guys. Um, the final boss was a nightmare named Vamoksha Envoy. And in the description of that envoy, it tells you a little bit more about the Vamoksha Chorus and Cornelia Ascetic. And that Corne Cornelia Ascetic was actually one of the ones that opted to not assume himself when Master Kuvaki emerged again. That the vast majority of the nation's uh, collective voluntarily gave themselves back up to the Master 
in order to join the new co- uh, the new hive collective, but some didn't. And Cornelius Sedek and his group was part of it. So now he uh, is not directly he doesn't he doesn't follow Master Kuvaki the entity now, but he does. Uh, but it is not like he's against them either. In fact, if anything, one could say that uh, Cornelius Sedek is not liked by the nation because he's too zealotous. Uh, he is actually even more. He he's more he's more than Sancha, right? So um, so yeah. So it's worth noting that any time that we see Sancha now, we don't know if it's Master Kuvakai or Cornelius Sedek. Sinesis, huh? Probably a good choice. Nah. What the hell? Why am I going like away? What? I'm just, hey, I'm just going to cook over here. Thanks. Whatever, man. I mean, a ring is good. All right. Where was I? Okay, so with all that said, let us begin with uh, the Triglavian data streams. Now, I'm sure all of you have watched all of my videos on my YouTube channel, and if not, I'm going to link it so that way you can all go there and subscribe and check out my stuff, especially my lore videos, in particular the two lore videos entitled Who are the Triglavians? Uh, two lore videos so far. Um, in fact, a lot of this is kind of what's brewing up for the next one, probably. Uh, so. The Triglavian Collective, when we first encountered them in the Abyss, we were able to get data sheets out of their um, caches. Or, sorry, we were able to get logs out of their caches. And since then, we can still get those uh, logs from the big cache in... Um, in the construction yard. But either way, you don't need to have them because you can always just look them up. They are called the... Uh, so, and for each of the four races that the Triglavians encountered, they have six records of them. The first two really represent like their first contact with them. The third is like a ramification. Uh, the fourth is a call for a decision and the fifth and sixth are different than all of the others and seem to be more like an ongoing communication. It's also worth noting that, uh, you, the, the first two, three were released at first and then the fourth and then five and six. All right. So we have in the data streams, we have the, Ancient enemy as Daja, which are the Drifters and Sleepers. We have the Augmented Forward Naradnia, which would be us. Augmented. Foreign, not from there. Hey, Grendel, thank you for that 21 months. Oh, seven, my friend. Uh, we, yeah, we need to make sure that you get taken care of. But, man, I appreciate it. It's good to see you. It's good to have you here. It's good to be able to entertain you. Um, all right, so... Augmented for Narania. Uh, Narania in this case means um, person. It's a Slavic word for the people, right? So, Augmented for Narania is capsuleers. Um, and then there's the Deviant Automata Vila, which is, uh, by the way, Vila is like a little tiny spirit. Um, that would be the Rogue Drones. Now, and, and the final one is the five-linked foreign Naradnia, H, uh, HFN. Now, it actually took us a little while to figure this one out, but uh, they, when they finally came out with the We Are Jordi Triglav video, it brought all questions to cease, or, you know, end, that it was, in fact, Sanchez Nation. 
Now, what's really bizarre about this is that I didn't make my bookmark as I landed. So, sucks to suck, I guess. Um, so, <laughs> Sanchez Nation, uh, or... Of, the, of all of those, Sanchez Nation was not in the abyss. Now, they're in the abyss now, after the update, but originally... They were not in the abyss, and yet the Triglavians had records of them, quite a few records about them, and records that give evidence that Sancha is clearly been in the abyss. So what's going on, right? This has always been one of those questions. This is why I said earlier, Sancha's never in the limelight anymore, but he's always there. He's in the worm, you know, oh, there's shattered wormholes. And oh wait, one of the sh two of the shattered wormholes also has Sancha dudes in it. That's weird. Oh yeah, there's new there's a new Triglavian collective, and they have all these records of all these people that they've been watching, including all these guys that you encounter in the abyss, and Sancha's nation, which you don't encounter in the abyss. You know, it, it, it's kind of weird. But uh, let's look at the actual logs and see what we can glean from them. So uh, as I said, you can just search for HFN. And it pulls them all up. The first one, HFN1. Uh, clade ships of the 27 Tactical Troika Classification and Communion Militant of Dasbog Subclade of Sfarog Clade encountered vessels under guidance of Hivelink for Narodnia at reverse time coordinates indecipherable while processing in sub-12 exclave of Conduit Loop Construct 189. Invocation of ancient time accepted noema of extirpation of Hivelink Narodnia proceeds with the with acceptable material uh, realization. Okay. Uh, at this point, anybody who's not familiar with my videos, uh, and this is your first time encountering this stuff, gets to go, blah. So we're going to break this down, okay? The, first of all, as I kind of alluded to earlier, the Triglavian Collective uh, used Slavic language uh, and, and Slavic mythology throughout their verbiage okay it's in their names it's in their um and it's in their terminology so let's break this down clade ship at the 27 tactical trachea classification communion militant at dasbog subclade as far clade um okay so a clade ship is just a triglavian ship the 27th tactical trachea classification well, if we look up the Kikimora, we show info, we look at its description, it says, this is nine. It's not the Kiki. Sorry. I knew that. <laughs> if we look up the Ved... Take two. Beep. Uh, if we look up the Vedmac and its description, we read, Vedmac subclade of Svaral clade relinquish... This is 81. Fuck. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. So... I didn't make a mistake. It's weird. This one's 81. The other one's uh, the Kikimura is eight uh, is nine. You would expect the one above the Kikimura to be the be the the 27. Wait a minute. That would mean the Rodiva is the 27, right? The Rodiva is the 27. Rodiva. It's kind of like it's kind of like. Uh, it's it's a cruiser, but it's a it's a smaller cruiser. It might be it might be the twenty. Uh, it must be the Rodivas. By the prayer of convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle, Rodiva subclade as Velis clade rel relinquishes the adaptation scheme of now time accepted seventy two tactical Troika classification. There is no twenty seven tactical Troika classification clade ship. And I brought this up to CCP. I pointed out that there's a typo. That the Rodiva number is backwards. And CCP, I believe it was Delegate Zero, responded with, Are you sure? Might have been Paradox. One of them jerks. Uh, so, there's no 27 Tactical Troika Classification clade ship. And yet, the 27 Tactical Troika Classification clade ships encounter is, are the subject of this, of this report. So now we have ships that don't exist fighting a race that doesn't isn't found in the abyss. Are we excited yet? All right, let me hack and I'll keep explaining.
Uh, this is not how to do the event, by the way. Uh, okay. So what this is saying is there is a subclade, Dazbog, uh, of the Svarog clade. The Svarog clade is one of the three Triglavian Collective's clades. Um, Svarog, Perun, and Velez. You can actually use my emotes. Uh, Svarog. That's the, uh, the Svarog logo right there. Um, Svarog is the most traditional and uh, kind of the most militant of the different clades. In fact, let's go look at their description. I'm taking my time today. We're going we're gonna to go through all the details that I can think of. We're going to lay out as much of this as we can. Nope, 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 nope. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> all right. Uh... Farog. Oh, yay, carbon. Uh. Hmm. What? Why isn't it pulling it up? Hold on. All right. Never mind. I'm just going to do it this way. Triglavian Collective. There we go. And Svarok Clade. This says, the Triglavian Collective... Uh, yeah, yeah, this is just the general description. The Svarok Clade is apparently made of many subclades, and the evidence so far indicates strength in combat vessel construction, the development of novel weapon systems, and extensive use of bioadaptive mutaplasmid technology. The Svarok Clade seems the most aggressive and traditional, uh, while inclined to explore new op opportunities. Cool. So, that's the Svarok Clade. Let's get back to our HFN. HFN1. So, the Dazbog subclade, which is a subgroup of the Svarog clade, which is one of the three clades of the Triglavian Collective, the subgroups of the Triglavian Collective, which the word clade means um, like a, a sub-branches from a... From a, 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 a in biology, it's multiple examples, but different like specimens of the same... Um, like genealogical tree. So like uh, humans and apes could be considered cladistically related, I believe. Um, but also like tabby cats and Siamese cats are cladistically related. I have yet to be corrected by somebody who like knows biology. So that's pretty much what I go with. All right, we've made it past the first line. It's always the longest. Actually, we were halfway through. Uh, encountered vessels under guidance of hive-linked foreign neurodnia, which is Sancha's nation, at reverse time coordinates indecipherable while processing in sub-12 exclave of conduit loop construct 189. Now, conduit loop construct... We don't have like a thousand percent evidence, but it would seem logical that a, since the the gates that are used in the abyss and elsewhere by the Triglavians are known as conduits, and uh, the three, you know, the abyss um, seems to be designed to kind of loop it back on itself in a way, uh, we assume that the conduit loop constructs are like the abyssal chains. And so this is just a, a specific, you know, what we see as random is just their territory. So this is like just a, a specific location within one of the conduit loops. Um, now this reverse time coordinates indecipherable is al it's always indecipherable. Um, and I believe this is because it's storing trinary data. It's storing space, like all of space time. So it's telling um, you when and where, like, it's being stored in a way that our systems don't process right, which is why it's indecipherable. 
I'm definitely not going to get this one, but we're going to try anyway. All right. Uh, okay. Invocation of ancient time accept accepted noema of extirpation of hive-linked Narania proceeded with acceptable material realization. So a noema is like an idea, or uh, which, and they use it almost like a policy, like the word policy. So they have an ancient time accepted policy of extirpation, which is to root out and destroy um, hive link, uh, hive linking, hive linked Narodnia, so hive linked humans, and it was successful. So it is. There isn't much to be like most of the time. At the end of these kinds of reports and pre in other ones, there's like some sort of how it got reported and, you know, a, a little bit more details. It is a bit odd with this one that it is so, so blunt. It's like, yep, the, this group encountered Sancha. We tried to kill him and we did. It's very simplistic. Um, but also, there's an accepted time, uh, there's, a, there's an ancient time policy. Uh, ancient time like they they when they refer to records it's obvious that like they just have records of time that they don't like really remember it's their ancient time so from way back in the day they have a rule that says that they must destroy any hive linked people that they encounter that's kind of curious why would they have that policy what do they have against hive linked people I think that's all we can pull out of this one. Let's go to HFN2. This is where things get really weird. Well, I actually might get this can. Do, do, do. All right. Yay. Yes, yes, yes. Not bad so far. All right. Um, okay. Ready? Here we go. Clade ships of the three tactical troika classification and communion militant of the Zembog subclade of Veles clade encountered vessels under guidance of Hivelink 4 Narania at reverse time coordinates indecipherable while processing in th sub 30 exclave of conduit loop construct 477. Invocation of ancient time accepted noema of extirpation of Hivelink Narania proceeded, but re material realization was unacceptable. Entosis of hive-linked foreign Narania into the body into body of three tactical troika classification clade ship commenced at reverse timed coordinate indecipherable and corruption of Narania of Zembog subclade. The Koshoi of the tactical troika advised emulation. The Nafka consented and invoked emulation at reverse time coordinates indecipherable. Holy shit! Like this is a, things just went from zero to fucking eleven, right? Like. This is a bit of a degree of escalation from we saw some dudes, we didn't like them, and we killed them, right? So, first things first. Three tactical troika classification. This means it is a Damovic. Zembog subclade of Veles clade. So, this is a different group and different clade. The Veles clade are also uh, some of the guys who like to work with other people. Uh, notably, the Svarog are the ones that hate the rogue drones, and the Velez are the ones that like the rogue drones and thought and think uh, decided that we could work with them. More on that on another day. Um, but this group of Damovics runs into Sancha. Uh, and by the oh, sorry, one last thing. Exclave. The word exclave here. Um, is also used earlier. It, that's actually like the lo that's the name for their territories, right? Um, it, it's actually the uh, Svarog exclave that gets uh, in, uh, like ransacked by the rogue drones, which causes them to not like them. Okay. Uh, once again, we get confirmation that there's an ancient time accepted noema of extirpation of Hivling Narania, but 
Material realization was unacceptable. We didn't, we failed to realize to an acceptable level our, uh, our plan of extirpating the hiveling foreign neuronia. We didn't kill them. In tosis of hiveling foreign neuronia into body of three tactical trachea classification cl- commenced at reverse time coordinates, blah. So in this case, in tosis, which is also used in a different, um, in the AEA, the drifter stuff, in this case, entosis is meaning its original definition. This is not the entosis link. This is uh, the entosis. This is the word that the entosis link is named after, which means to breach and enter. Okay. So remember, Green Magic, Sancha has boarding parties. They raid things and they kidnap people out of those boarding uh, out of those ships. So here they are breaking into a Damovic and beginning to corrupt the members therein. Something known as the Koshoi, which means like um, ascendant. It's like an ascendant being, a deathless one um, of the tactical troika. We believe that that's like, or that seems to be like the ship's captain or leader. Advised emulation. The Nafka consented. The Nafka, we don't know for sure. But it is the detached Nafka that was sent to go interface with the road drones, and the road drones have to submit to in order to uh, be accepted by the collective. Um, also, the Nafka in a different one, in the road drone one, is like the thing that consults the pat, like brings the like historical record to bear um, to the discussion. So it seems as if the Nafka is some sort of like computer system or disembodied AI, or uh, something along those lines. There is a... uh, One of the tinfoil conspiracy theories is that because of the declining uh, resources in the abyss, there's not enough bodies, there's not enough food for for the bodies that they have. So that means that they needed to have less bodies. And thus... Uh, began their glorification of the fit and mortification of the unfit. That some of them were made to be, you know, uh, ascendant. That that they uh, became, you know, the leaders of the collect of their various groups. Um, the Narania is actually the physical form, the bodies of the people, and uh, the Koshoi might actually be basically infomorphs of people. They they take the 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 personality the person out of the body and inject it into somewhere else. Now, when Zoria talks, you hear three different voices, with one of them being a robotic voice. So a lot of people believe that that is uh, the the neuron uh, the Nafka. All right, enough of that. So the leader advises that the ship get blown up. Um, the the body. I mean. Who knows? Probably. Uh, the Nafka consented and it invoked uh, emulation. So, Sancha's nation begins to board the ship and corrupt the crew. And it is decided that the only way to settle this is self-destruction. And so they do. Now, I'm going to point out at this point that this story kind of makes the first story a little sus. But we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later. HFN3. Paramount tactical tra- a technical traica of Gramavi subclade of Perunclade reported to the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle, the entosis and corruption of multi-body tracking de- clade p- pylon of by hive-link foreign neurania a reverse time coordinates indecipherable in sub-17x clave of conduit loop constructs 33. Clade ships of the 729 Tactical Traika classification and communion militant of Dasbog subclade, a Svarog clade, process, uh, processed to sub 617 exclave of conduit loop construct 33 and invoked noema of extirpation of Hivelink Narania on corruption, corrupted clade pylon with acceptable material realization. So, paramount technical Traika. So, if a Traika is like a group, a Traika is like. Uh, it can either be a a disproportionate power structure of three different leaders, or 
a, a carriage drawn by three horses. So in this case, it could be like a ship or it could be, you know, a squad. We don't actually know how many. It could be a single person, right? The troika could be the three in one person. We don't know. But whatever the troika is, this is the top of the technical troika and of the perunclade. Perunclade of the three are the more dip, most diplomats um, or diplomatic of the three. They seem to hold more command over the rest. Let's look into them. Gosh darn it. Hold on. Trig lobby. So, Perunclade. The Perunclade seems to be made of, of many subclades and appear to be accomplished in space time mechanics, high impulse FTL engine construction, and electronic subsystems, or electronic systems. The Perunclade. Uh, apparently exerts itself on the sphere of strategic leadership of the collective to a greater degree than the others. And then also, I believe if you look at the clade pylon description, uh, there is a, it's a test against the um, capsuleers to see if they, it works with them, and they're reporting that it does work. Um, in fact, uh, augmented foreign Narania, we're going to just, uh, we're going to jump ship a little bit and go over here and see... Uh, Yeah, Paramount Technical uh, Troika of Gramavi Subclade reports outcome of reverse time studious communion with records drawn through the clade flow uh, from many clade pylons of the multi-body tracking variant. The sense of metaxy from records was resolved, but the corruption apparent by the Noema that vessels under guidance of augmented... For Sorry, uh, was resolved without corruption apparent by the Noema that vessels under guidance of augmented for Narania accept the aura field of the clade pylon. This is basically just reporting that the clay, that the uh, multi-body tracking pylons that you see in the abyss uh, do in fact work on capsuleer chips and confirming that we aren't corrupted, which in like every single case, they double check to make sure we're not hive link corrupted. Uh, all right. Have a good one, Grendel. All right. Back to HFN3. Uh, so. Gramavi. Gramavi. So same group. So these guys are the technical troika are like the the manufacturers, right? Uh, in fact, the uh, the new the um, the little chunky boys that the uh, that the Triglavians have in that is like their equivalent of the orcas that deploy their structures in in their held systems. Uh, Dos uh, Kalida, yeah. Either way, um, they are. If you look at them, they are technical troikas. Ash, when you're ready to search subjects, what is the weird Winter Nexus characters that are popping up on the Holo? Creepy CCP acid trip. Uh, so those are uh, the... Um, quick aside, this is actually not that uh, hard of a question to answer. Shoot, what are they called? Uh, there's the U-Lads, right? Uh, the U-Lads are the uh, an Icelandic tradition of... And these, like last year, I think it was, they introduced the concept that there is an equivalent. That there, um, what are these things called? They're not just called Yule Lads. Either way, whatever. So those, um, the guys in the picture are this. It's the, it's the, um, it's the in-game equivalent of the Icelandic tradition of the Yule Lads. And each of the Yule Lads has a name that is derivative of the in-game ones have a derivative kind of name of the, uh, like this would be um, sausage swiper in real life, for example. Um, yes. All right. Uh, okay. We can get back into it. HFN three or HFN. Okay. So, So the Gramavi subclade of Perunclade is reporting to the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle, the breaching and corruption of a multi-body tracking pylon by the Hivelink for Narania at reverse times coordinates this and this place. Okay? So they aren't there. They're just reporting it out to the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. Now... We'll, we'll digress briefly about the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. Uh, 
the Triglavi and Clades don't like each other. Like, at all. Their entire culture, their entire society is based on survival of the fittest. The proving, right? Glorification of the fit, mortification of the unfit, all that stuff. If they, if they, if they could, they probably would eradicate each other. However, they also still see a combined purpose, right? Like they can compete internally. They think that they're better than each other, but they recognize that they share a common goal or more importantly, a common destiny, what they refer to as the flow of Viraj. And this flow of Viraj stands in direct contradiction to the flow, uh, to the Poshlost flow, which would be corrupt flow. Viraj means heavenly flow. So to that end, they actually have a group of Triglavians. We don't know how big they, or small they are, uh, but they seem to really, uh, they, like, they're like the Triglavian UN, they, and, but they have more power. They call the shots, right? The, this convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle, uh, the struggle between the clades, this convocation stands outside of that struggle in order to try to uh, represent the combined will of the Triglavian Collective in their combined path, even though internally they are in conflict. So uh, we see a lot of the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle once we start to uh, encounter Zoria Triglav, and in the invasions and all that stuff, Zarya Triglov reports every single time that they speak for the convocation of Triglov outside of the struggle. Um, and in the reports, they report to the convocation of Triglov outside of the struggle. And, you know, there's a lot of messages back and forth, but we'll get there. So these are important dudes. It's like basically they, they're they they're reporting to the tippy top guys, the people like that run that is in charge of like everybody and coordinates everybody that these guys got breached and corrupted the multi-body tracking pylon, which is interesting because uh, last I checked, a, a multi-body tracking py clade pylon is not a person. So in the first case, they corrupted the people. And in this case, they corrupted the clade pylon. So they send the 729 tactical troika classification which I believe Yep. Lashak subclade of Ellis clade scattered the adaptation scheme of reverse timer clade adaptation of 729 tactical trick classification vessel into the clade flow without proving after convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. Convocation of the commune Troika has now time pressure to dispersal to the strategic Troika. This is part of the uh, Drifter story. If you go and watch that video, uh, basically the, web, the, the ships that they had, the Damoviks, uh, were ineffective against the Drifters, so they needed a solution. Speaking of glorification of the fit, mortification of the unfit, Joe Bane. I I owe seven to you in, in chat earlier uh, in in local. I didn't. I don't know if you, it, it even worked or you saw it, but uh, you, sir, are glorified. Everyone here. We're gonna pause. Oh no! I literally it was as I was jumping. There was no such thing as uh, on time. Like I literally didn't know whether or not it went to your local or the next system's local. Uh, but I, I typed it the first time, and or I started to type it, but then it like popped up the Edencom uh, dialogue, and so then I had to like close that, or I had to hit OK. But by that point, now I'm jumping, so I had to quickly. Oh, seven, enter. Anyway, so uh, everyone, I should have said this at the beginning, uh, but now everybody gets to go over, click on Joe Bain's name in chat, uh, or better yet, hold on, hold on, Joe. There we go. Click on that one and uh, go to his place and hit uh, follow and then come on back. I'll wait. How's it going, man? How was your stream? How's things been? I, 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 I saw that, or, you know, I know you guys pulled out of the war zone. Sad, but, you know, it happens. I don't fault you for it. All right, cool, cool. All right, everybody back? Good. I lost a few ships, not too much happening. 
We've been taking a break over the holidays. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it, tell, I'm telling you guys, uh, we talked a little bit about PvP yesterday, um, and I remember talking about like the making the mistakes and learn and learning your mistakes and getting better and going from like one second to three, you know, three seconds to five seconds, and you know, as you get better and better throughout the fight. That came from Joe Bain. Dead on. If you want to learn how to PvP, and uh, you're not a you're not a chump about it. Take the Joe Bain school of PvP. I'm telling you, you will not regret it. Eventually. Anywho, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, maybe. Oh yeah, hold on. Let me. I was. I had HFNs. We were still. We were talking about Sanchez Nation. Okay. Um. So. Here we have the Lashax of the Dazbog subclade of Svarog clade that go there, invoke the Noema of extirpation of Hiveling Naranya on the clade pylon with acceptable materialization. So once again, their, extru- their instructions, their, uh, their report is just, yep, we went there, we, uh, we decided to kill him, and we did. And that's it. That's the entire report. Uh, and it's worth noting that this is the same subclade that first encountered Sanchez Nation and also killed them. Okay? You know, the ship that doesn't exist, that ran into the people that aren't in the abyss. So what, the next report. So far, so good, right? Like... We encountered them. We killed them. We encountered them. They actually almost got us, but we uh, we immolated the ship to protect ourselves, and uh, they corrupted one of our structures, and we went and blowed it up. So far, so good. Shouldn't be any problems. Convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle receives prayer of the detached executive troika for the sublimation of Poshloss flow, for evolution of the processing flow, winnowing discourses, operating as in as elements in relation to Hivelink for Narania. Convocation denied relief of prayer from co- direct detached executive troika for expanded mandate in subornos concerning corruption of hive linking and corrupted neuronia. Convocation invokes special mandate for advancing time evoked operation troika. Convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle by imperative evokes special operation troika for the extirpation of corrupted neuronia from Dazbog subclade of Svarog clade. Special Operations Troika shall have mandate in Subornos of advancing time grave communion with Kalades assembled and Subclades militant to realize the accepted noem of extirpation of corrupted Narani and hive linking within the flow of Viraj, the domain of Buyan, and the ancient domains. Ho. Oh. So much for good, so much for so far so good, right? Uh, what we have here is the detached executive Troika of the sublimation of Poshloss flow, who is. We can shorten that to Zoria Triglov. Okay? So this is Zoria Triglov sending a request, a prayer, to the convocation of Triglov outside of the struggle to for the evolution of processing flow of, winnow, of winnowing discourses, which basically means uh, processing, procession means moving forward, uh, flow, whatever. Winnowing means separating like wheat from chaff, discourses. Operating in elements related to Hivelink for Anarania. So this happens in every single four, right? In AA4, we have uh, uh, Prayer of the Ted Tashik Executive Troika for Sublimation Postal Flow has evoked procession from convocation of Triglov outside of the struggle that re- re- requires winnowing of all discourses operating in, as elements in relation to the ancient enemy as Daja through semiosis. So same, same, right? They always are. One or the other side is basically initiating a, a winnowing of the discourse, which I interpret as being like, a, all right, we need to come to a decision about this. And in this case, based on the second sentence, we kind of get a little bit more about what the detached executive troika was going for. It says, convocation denied relief of prayer from the detached executive troika for expanded mandate in subornos concerning corruption of hive-linked and corrupted neuronia. Now, the mandates of uh, Zoria Triglov is actually, we can, if we go back to the AA, can I? Yeah. 
It says detached executive troika is granted mandate in subornos to invoke countervailing imperatives without reverse time proving. So they're given a mandate that's subornos means like in partnership, in support, like in conjunction with. uh, Subornos is like a servant of, but you know what I mean. Glorification of the fit. Mortification of the unfit. Steve, you are glorified. Once again, everybody who is already here, click on Steve's Haven's game, uh, uh, name or follow this link that I'm going to post. That is a huge raid, dude. That's a huge raid. I appreciate it, man. That's awesome. Well done, dude. Uh, S.O. How was your stream, man? Why is this not pulling you up? There it is. Thank you for the follows, guys. All right. Because I know this is going to like do a whole bunch at once. I'm going to mute it for now, and then hopefully we'll remember to per- turn it back on. So that way we don't just hear uh, about immortality over and over. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So, yeah. Steve, uh, Steve is uh, very good with consistent giveaways. Um, does good Eve stuff, too? Eve, uh, did you do combat or uh, hacking? I, uh, I did the entire combat track from start to finish yesterday in like seven and a half hours. Yeah, I'm doing hacking too. Hey, Nick, how's it going, man? But I mean, like, I'm presumably doing hacking, but we're really just discussing Sanchez Nation today. So, to catch everybody up, um, well, it, it, the combat's faster given the assumption that, thank you, uh, Jesus Christ! Thank you, 07 to you, man, uh, Volvo. Glorification to the fit. Mortification to the unfit. What is even happening? I literally can't, uh, I mean, we're almost about to get a hype tram for all I know. All right. CCP, of course, is glorified. Uh, I almost feel absurd in saying to go follow, uh, CCP. How's it going, ISD Thalic? Nope. Oh, God, there it is. Hype train. Son of a gun. All right. And... Rob Lucas 77 gifting five T1 subs to Kvet, uh, Dominic, Chaotic, and CCB Swift. How's it going, CCB Swift? And Digital XX, uh, uh, Digital 21 coming in with a tier one sub. What is he happening? Bits are coming in. Hype it up. Hype. Oh my gosh. Oh man, watch. Uh, so, so <laughs> hey, man. Free subs, free subs are great. You know, you know what prime subs are. Prime subs are, uh, pay, Bezos paying me money, right? That's that's you taking money from Bezos. It's great. Uh, and just like Paris, uh, Paratici coming in with the prime sub. All, everybody, okay, d- because it's a hype train. Not only do you get all of these awesome uh, emotes that are part of the precursor crisis, including SOE, SOCT, Fucker, Concord, Jove. All three Triglavian clades, as well as the Triglavian Collective, Eden, Com, Convocation of Empyreans, Aeron Robotics, uh, Mauro, and I think even some more that I haven't listed, all for uh, your sub. Plus, if you do it right now, of course, because it's a hype train, you will get a hype train emote, because we are in level three, and I'm supposed to do a giveaway. And last time I checked, my giveaways don't work, and I hadn't set up my freaking thing to do the giveaways that I was wanting to do today. So... Let's see if it worked. Let me let me just let me just see if I can make this happen. Oh my god, hi you guys. How much for the t-shirt? What this one? The E Vegas t-shirt? Uh I don't know. How much is the time machine? I, I'm missing people. I know it. All of the follows. I'm breathing. It's fine. Don't worry, guys. I I'm here. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. And you guys are here for it, too, obviously, too. I appreciate it, guys. You guys are awesome. Fen- Fenicus, Fenicus, thank you for those 500 bits. 
Here's a Sumerix with a Twitch Prime sub. 07s. 07s in chat. Especially all you guys who just got a sub. I want to see everybody's 07s. Let's see my pod 07. Let's see other su uh, streamers 07s. Show all the 07s that you got. I, I encourage all of the different Eve streamers to have their own 07s. Show off your favorite Eve streamers 07s. You can just type the letters 07 if you don't got that. It's okay. We don't judge. Just an opportunity. Any of these streamers 07s that you're seeing, if you don't recognize it, you can actually click on that emote and you should be able to like immediately... Uh, Go and sub, uh, you know check out that streamer's stuff, I think. Last I checked. All right. Look at all those 07s. Thank you guys so much. Hype Train is awesome. Oh, here comes 911 Lady Death. 07s. Good golly. I think I should probably start over. Uh, I I only I I probably will have to get off in an hour or so uh so although i'm i'm gonna message uh them and say hey i just got rated for 800 people so if you take a little bit of time i don't mind hold on one second i we'll, we'll get to this we'll, we'll, i promise all right uh uh just got rated by 800 people so if you're late, I won't mind very much. There you go. All right. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. Nick Bison coming in with the TIS logo. TIS being a great place to find news and uh, analysis. Let's see if CloudBot's going to work today. Oh, <gasps> it worked. It worked! I can do it! Excellent! 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 So, what we're going to do is I'm going to complete this. We're going to do a scope skin giveaway. Uh, I, I, I do a giveaway anytime it goes, but since I wasn't able to do it yesterday, I was going to do it yesterday, couldn't do it yesterday, so we're going to do two right now. Uh, get this going. I plunder the abyss and you plunder my skin collection exclamation point plunder for your chance to win. We'll keep this open for a few minutes. Go for it. Cease to be convict. Oh sevens to you, sir. It's good to see you guys. Thank you guys so much. Did I miss something uh, important in, in uh, on CCP stream? Should I have been checking you guys out? Uh, was it an ISD chill stream? Not, I mean, of course, if you... Oh, ECM class. Oh, cool. Excellent. All right. Nine more seconds. We're coming into Hype Train level four. Last little bit. You can get yourself an emote. 100 bits or... Ah, there it goes. We're done. Everybody show your Hype Train emote. Let's get it out there. Hype train, hype train. Hype hands. <laughs> choo choo. All right. You guys are awesome, man. All right. So, uh, I'm going to do a much faster recap than I did for the first hour. Uh, Sancha Kavaki. Uh, I could just start again with the CDIA file video. We'll, we'll we'll start with that because that, that does actually like cover a whole bunch of ground real quick. So um, let's put it up on the screen. I'm gonna I'm gonna we. There's a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to close the alert box so that way we can see anything else for the next few hours. Uh, doesn't mean that you guys aren't awesome. I'm going to play this video and then we're going to talk a little bit more. Oh, let me get that.
Nearly two centuries ago, an industrial mogul named Sancha Kuvaki built an empire as an arms manufacturer during the first Galente Kaldari War. Hailed as a cultural messiah, Kuvaki drew millions of colonists to his domain by promising a utopian alternative to contemporary society. However, Sancho was also secretly using his vast resources to fund cybernetic experimentation on humans, turning them into slaves loyal only to him. When the great empires learned of these practices, they joined forces to end his regime. Through their combined efforts, Sancha and his minions were hunted down and driven off. Those few sympathizers who survived settled in the Stain region, far from Empire borders. But years later, groups of Sancha began short, well-organized incursions into secure space. Using advanced technology, they were repeatedly able to sneak past defenses and make surface landings on sovereign worlds, abducting millions. These unfortunate souls were doomed to become part of Sancha's twisted hive mind forever. Sancha Kuvaki has brought his war back to the empires with a vengeance, directly challenging the resolve of Capsuleers. While none can say with certainty what his agenda might be, he seems determined to re-establish his so-called promised land for good. So that is Mr. Kuvaki. Awesome. Uh, so, Sancha was formed in like, uh, uh, and like the original Sancha was like in the year 30 something, uh, YC. Uh, he comes back in like 2006, uh, or the nation starts to activate again in 2006. Master Kuvakai kind of begins to emerge in like 2008, 2009. And then of course the incursions begin in 2010. Um, I went over some other stuff about uh, Master Kavaki and like the Sanchez Nation over time, but we are mostly talking about the Triglavian Collective's relationship with them and the conspiracies that are kind of or the the um, tinfoil surrounding that. So we're going to start back with uh, AA one. Uh, play the incursion trailer too. Okay, great. You know, good. You know, if I ever get a question about whether or not I have like the rights to 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 play these videos on my show, I'm gonna be like. What are you talking about? CCP demands me do it. All right, hold on. This is the uh, incursion trailer. Wait, is it? No, it isn't. Hold on. Shoot, hold on. I closed it for some reason. Dang it. Put the window back on. Close. Ooh, mystery. All right. Uh... Nope. There it is.
So, cheery fellow, all told. Uh, good guy. All right. Uh, so, we uh, uh, the short of it is, since incursions and really, um, you know, throughout Eve history, throughout the Eve, uh, like the the actual active story since e- Eve Online has been brought on board, Sancho Kavaki has not usually been in the limelight except for during incursions but uh has always been like there in a way that's always pretty mysterious you know uh when the shattered wormholes happened he's in some there's sancha forces in the shattered wormhole uh there's connections to between sancha and uh the sleeper uh the wormhole storyline because of the portal gun and his their connection with jove space and whatnot uh and these, the Triglavian Collective, have um, there. Yeah, there are several chronicles um, here. Let me show you. If you go to these links, the fiction.eveonline.com will redirect you to the real one, which is universe.eveonline.com. Thank you guys for making the redirect work, so that way I didn't have to update that yet. <laughs> but uh, uh, and then evereader.org, it, Zendane. Uh, does the readings of a lot of the chronicles, including Uplifted, which is a, which is uh, about Sancha's uh, abductions and stuff. By the way, speaking of which, Convict, I don't remember how this ever got resolved, but I mentioned this earlier. Did we ever find the Garistus CDIA video with the audio? I don't think so. But I couldn't remember exactly. Either way. So, let's start... Again, with uh, with the records from uh, from Triglavians. Now, the important thing here is that uh, of the different four groups that that the Triglavians have records of. When we first went into the abyss, we were able to collect these records. At first, we were able to get one through three, and then a little bit later, we got four, and then we got five and six during the Secrets of the Abyss, um, and. There are four sets of six, the HFN, AFN, uh, AEA, and DAV. So DAV is D- Deviant Atom- Automata Villa, uh, which would be rogue drones, because Villa means like little sp- spirits. So it's uh, Deviant uh, Automated Spirits, rogue drones. Uh, we are the augmented form Neurania. Neuronian means like person or the people, rather. Um and so, you know, we're augmented. We're not from the abyss. We're foreign, and we are Naranya. Uh, then there's a little bit more interesting. There's the AEA, which is the ancient enemy as Daja, which is what they refer to as what I believe they're referring to the Second Jovian Empire. But in this case, they're referring to the Drifters and Sleepers. Um, hold on. How about the supposed five-year-old secret that's never been found? That's supposedly in a wormhole somewhere. That's also supposed to have had some sort of some kind of big uh, impact on the game. Honestly, completely believe it. Don't want to uh, uh, diverge too much in this into this uh, right now because I want to get as much of this done as possible. But I, I would at one thousand percent believe it if you do any research into like. Um, What's it called? Uh, Eric Jalon Project. And the kinds of things... It frustrates me to no end how many secrets are in a wormhole space and we're just not even paying attention to it. Secrets that have been det- uh, found but then forgotten and lost. Uh, there's pop-up windows that happen when you go within proximity of places. There's uh, You can trigger things by uh, by doing things to things. Uh, there's secrets in the names and all that. Like, there, there's a reason why... Uh, the wormhole, uh, like the whole wormhole project from a lore perspective, I call it the puzzle box. Uh, it was developed by CCB Drop Air and, and others to be that way. Um, so. <laughs> just a, yeah, it's just a jet cannon space. Uh, there's also, of course, the landmark that was added in that I don't think anybody's found yet. Um, but. Back to Sancha. Uh. The fourth uh, data stream is the Hive-linked Foreign Neurania, HFN. Now, there's a bit of some confusion about it. There is some speculation about it. But then when the We Are Zoria Triglav video came out, that uh, removed all doubt. And that this is referring to Sancha's Nation. Um, 
So the weirdest part about this is uh no, 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 I'm mostly just talking about Sancha. Um, the weird part about this is that of the four, you see drifters in the abyss, you see rogue drones in the abyss, and uh, you're in the abyss, but up until the uh, expansion of the abyss, which happened like a year and a half or more later, after the initial abyss, when these records came out, we never saw... Sancha in the abyss. He wasn't... Sancha's forces were never present in the abyss. They just weren't a rat in the abyss. And yet, for some reason, the Triglavians have records of their encounters with it, including them coming into the abyss. So, uh, there's already... We already know that there's something weird going on here. So, let's begin. HFN1. Clade ships of the seven, uh, 27th Tactical Troika Classification and Communion Militant at Dosbog Subclade as Farag Clade encountered vessels under guidance of Hivelink for an Irani at ver- reverse time coordinates indecipherable while processing in sub-12 exclave of Conduit, co- lo- ah, Conduit Loop Construct 189. Invocation of ancient time accepted Noema of extirpation of Hivelink n- Narania proceeded with accepted material realization. Okay, so at this time I have to point out that the Triglavians have a certain way of speaking. They often use uh, Slavic language and, more importantly, Slavic mythology or, or spiritual language in order to, uh, you know, to get their point across. Like Naradnia, for instance, the people, or Villa, the spirits. In this case, um, uh, what was my point? <laughs> so that being, so th- what we have to do is we have to break down their their. Uh, the script for you. So we're going to do so one line at a time. So clade ship of cla- uh, the 27th tactical Troika classification and communion militant of the Dosbog subclade of Svarog clade. So first and foremost, uh, the Triglavian collectives are divided into three clades. A clade is a biological term that means like two branches of the same root branch. So like uh, the great ape and human clade or uh, the tabby cat and Siamese cat clade potentially. Uh, I've yet to be corrected about it, so I'm still going to stick with that. Um, so, then within the clade, they have subclades. So, we have the Dazbog subclade of the Svarog clade. Now, both Svarog and Dazbog are Slavic deities, but we're not going into that now. Uh, so, the clade ship of the blank tactical troika classification mean it, it means it's a the type of ship okay so we're gonna look we're gonna start out if we go to the damovic actually let's go let's start with the kikimora if we go to the kikimora we see that it is the kikimora is the nine tactical troika classification clade ship so kikimora subclade is far clade revised adaptation schema for the clade ship of the nine tactical troika classification has been accepted for imprinting and advancing time generations blah 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 so kikimoras are the ninth tactical troika Nine tactical Troika. Great. So, uh, Dam- spoilers, Do- Damovic is three. Kiki is th- nine. So then, Vedmac. Vedmac. Vedmac, it should be the 27, right? Vedmac. Vedmac. Vedmac subclade is Farog clade. Relinquishes adaptation schema for reverse time adaptation 81 tactical Troika classification. Okay. Wait. There is a cruiser that's technically lighter weight than the Vedmac. It could be the Rodiva. So, theoretically speaking, if you go, like, 81 would be the next one up, right? It would go 3, 9, 27, 81. That makes sense. We're all, we're all on the same page here, right? So, but let, let's look at the Rodiva. Prior to the, by the convocation of the Triglav outside of the struggle, Rodiva subclade of Velis clade relinquishes the adaptation scheme of now time accepted 72 tactical Troika classification into the clade flow of Triglav. Wait a minute. Draugr? Well, the problem is that Draugr isn't actually developed by the Triglavians. The T2 Triglavians, uh, the T2 Triglavian ships are actually developed by the Empires. So the Draugr is actually uh, the Thucker tribe's modification to the Kikimora. So the Rodiva is 72. Not only is that um, not 27, but it's not even in the same chain 
of multiple of uh, powers of three. It would appear wrong. I've even told CCP this. Uh, I, I think it was CCP Paradox at Vegas. I was like, you know, like there's a typo and it's really confusing because the Rodiva should be 27 and it's listed as 72. Everything else works. And I think that it's causing people to not be able to like catch on to the pattern because it's not like there's a break in the pattern. And he just went to looked at me and went, are you sure about that? So it hasn't been changed. They haven't corrected it. They correct other typos. Uh, yes, it is the driver is the Mimitar ship. Um, so, two things about that. One, it makes it to, so the Rodiva is kind of out of phase, which kind of makes sense because the rest of them are combat ships and this is a logistics ship. But uh, what's really weird about this is that that means that there is no 27 Tactical Troika classification plate ship that we are aware of. So now, now we have the. Uh, uh, a ship that doesn't exist encountering a group that isn't in the abyss. Okay. Under guidance of Hivelink for Narania, Sanchez Nation, at reverse time coordinates, blah. This is, they always, this is always, reverse time means like a past record. So this is like saying when it happened. And it's always indecipherable. I believe that this is because they record their time, you know, space-time uh, coordinates and whatnot as a trinary data, which would be not translatable. Like it, it, our interpreters don't just garble it or whatever, right? So while process, processing in sub-12, this is we believe that sub-12 exclave of conduit loop construct. A conduit loop construct is like an abyssal chain. We think um, an exclave is a piece of territory, so we assume that this is a. <laughs> uh, we assume that this is a uh, it's like a specific room in the abyss. Uh, invocation of ancient time accept accepted noema of extirpation of high-linked uh, neuronia preceded with acceptable material real realization. They're basically saying uh, we have an old school policy. A noema is like an idea or a policy. Uh, of extirpation, which means to root out and completely destroy, hive-linked nor neurodnia preceded an acceptable material realization. In other words, uh, we wanted to kill it, and we did. It's a very simple report. Um, other, uh, most of the other reports are a little bit more detailed, especially about how it's recorded and, and it being submitted into the clade flow. But this is a very cut report, right, first and foremost. But the one thing that we can pull out of this is the fact that the Triglavians have an accepted ancient noema. So there's this ancient policy from the before times. The Triglavians don't even remember the ancient times. They just have records of their information and rules from that time. Uh, but they, all they know is that for as long as they've been here, they have had a rule that lets them to kill... Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> uh, that, that tells them that they must destroy any hive-linked people that they encounter. That's weird. So, Dosbog subclade, Starrock clade, encounters uh, Sancha in ships that don't exist, and they kill them. Got it. Two. Clade ships of the three tactical troika classification and communion militant of Zembog subclade of Svelis clade encountered vessels under guidance of hive-linked foreign Narani at reverse time coordinates indecipherable while processing in sub-30 exclave of conduit loop construct 477. Invocation of ancient time accepted noema of extirpation of hivelink neurania preceded, but material real realization was unacceptable. Intosis of hivelink ne foreign neurania into body of three cl tactical tra class bleh, three tactical troika classification clade ship commenced at reverse time coordinate indecipherable, and the corrupted neurania and corrupted neurania of Zembog subclade. The Koshoi of the tactical troika advised immolation. The Nafka consented and invoked immolation. A reverse time coordinates indecipherable. Well, that got uh, bad fast. So, in this case, what we see is a bunch of uh, we we see Damovix from the Zembog subclade of the of the Velis clade that encounter the Sanchez Nation. They try to destroy them, but fail. Intosis in this case. Uh, just means like entry, forced entry, right? Uh, so 
they the 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 Damovic is boarded by the Sancha, and the people inside the Naradnia are corrupted. The Naradnia of Zembog subclade are corrupted. Okay. The Koshoi of the Tactical Troika advised immolation. The Nafka consented and invoked immolation. So the Koshoi, which uh, the Koshoi and the Nafka are not well understood concepts within the Triglavian Collective, but uh, they basically divide themselves in Koshoi, Naradnia, and Nafka. The Koshoi means like deathless. We we a lot of people believe that these are like almost like ascendant ones. These are ones that have been uh, they're the leaders of their group, um, and it, Really, one of the tinfoil theories is that this relates to the idea of glorification of the fit and mortification of the unfit, right? That there's ex- very little resources within the abyss. They're starving. And so uh, they there's not, enough mal- there's not enough food for all the mouths to feed. And so what they do is those who are found worthy are allowed to, like, remain or even ascend and become their immortal leaders, maybe. Uh, But those who don't, who don't deserve their body, are stripped of their body, and their their mind, their infomorph, is then preserved as basically their replacement for a shipboard computer, the Nafka. Now, it may just be that the Nafka is also just an AI, but, you know, who knows? We don't know. We do know that the Nafka... It is the detached Nafka that communicates and coordinates and controls the rogue drones for the Velis Clade. So, either way, what we know is that the Koshoi, the guy in charge of the ship, it would seem, uh, advi- ships advised immolation, and that the computers ex- agreed, and the ship self-destructed. So, uh... They, they encounter the uh, Sancha, they fail to kill them, they get boarded, they begin to become corrupted, they immolate the ship to, to uh, prevent it from, like, spreading or whatever. Okay. Well, I mean, Sparog are definitely more militant, so maybe they're just stronger. And they had the, the, the cool ships that don't exist, so that might have been it. Uh, all right. Here's the third one. Paramount Technical Troika of Grimavi Subclade of Perun Clade reported... To the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle, the entosis and corruption of multi-body tracking clade, p- clade pylon by hive-link foreign Narania at reverse time coordinates indecipherable in sub-17-exclave of conduit loop construct 33. Clade ships of the 729 cl- tactical trika classification and communion militant of Dazbog subclade as far as clade processed to sub-17-exclave of conduit loop construct 33 and invoked noema of extirpation of hive-link Narania and corrupted clade pylon with acceptable material realization. Once again... The Dazbog subclade go in and destroy things successfully with not much further report after that. But in this case, we have the Paramount Technical Troika. The Technical Troika are like their manufacturers and stuff. Um, that uh, they they actually run the clade pylons. You can see in actually one of the um, reports about us that it's also the Paramount Technical Troika that's running tests on the clade pylons uh, uh, with us. So they're kind of responsible for these clade pylons. Uh, especially the multi-body tracking pylons that you see in the abyss. Um, and so it would seem that Sancha has corrupted one of these multi uh Yeah, Sancha is the Borg. Uh, well, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, Sancha is pretty close to the Borg. Um, so they dispatch... Oh, by the way, uh, sorry, the this group... Of, from the Perun clade, reports this to the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. Now, the clades don't like each other. Internally, they are constantly in conflict with one another. They're in they're in a process known as the proving, right? Uh, in particular, Svarog and Velas have uh, don't really get along, uh, but they still understand. Hey, O seven, um, old Mister Boston, thank you for that. Uh, they still understand. I'm getting chilly. Uh, I'll be right back. Let me get my coat or my jacket. I check and just keep on talking. So they still understand that they have this like shared purpose. They have a shared vision. They, even though internally they are struggling for who's best, they're still all Triglavians. And 
the Triglavian Collective have a path, a destiny, or flow that they refer to as the flow of virage. Um, and the flow of virage stands in direct contrast to the posh lost or corrupt flow. So the combined will of the... Uh, so internally and, you know, internally, whatever you want to call it, between the clades, there is what's called the struggle. But there's a group or convocation that stands outside of the struggle that functions as kind of like the, the people who uh, control the combined will of the collective for the good of the, everybody. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's not a blood rage jacket, although you're not the first person to say that in the last two days. Um, okay, so... Uh, so they're reporting it to the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle because Perun, if you notice, aren't the ones that take care of it. Perun report it, but they, they dispatch the Dosbog subclade of Svarog clade. Now, it's possible that the Do they did this because the Dosbog subclade are also the ones that killed uh, the ships in the first report, but we're not sure. But in this case, they're successful. There is an interesting question here where their Noema is the extirpation of the Hivelink Narodnia, the last time they corrupted the Narodnia, and this time they have a corruption of multi-body tracking pi pylon. So it's the multi-body tracking pylon, which last I checked is not a person, but the extirpation of Hivelink Narodnia, Noema, was invoked. I, uh, that's weird. Uh, oh, there's way, way more than is needed for a short, interesting movie. Trust me. Uh... I mean, if you think about it, the entirety of the expanse pretty much takes place in uh, in luminaire pre-gate construction. It's it's during the 70 years between, you know, if you Mars is Caldari, Earth is Galente, and they're working together to colonize the the solar system. They haven't built the first Stargate yet. That go either way. Uh, <laughs> so cool. The thing here is, so far, so good, right? Like, the the second report was a little bit odd. They got taken over, but, I mean, they immolated themselves, so they stopped it from being a problem. So as long as they go with bigger ships, um, they should be fine, right? No problem. Everything's fine. Hivelink for Narani is fine. Let's move on. Convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. Receive prayer from of the detached executive Troika for sublimation of Poshloth's flow, for evolution of the procession, procession flow, winnowing discourses, operating as elements in relation to Hivelink for Narania. Convocation denied relief of prayer from detached executive Troika for expanded mandate and subornos concerning corruption of Hivelinking and corrupted Narania. Convocation invoked special mandate for advancing time evoked operation tra operational Troika. Evoked operational Troika. Convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle by imperative evokes special operation Troika for the extirpation of corrupted Narania from Dazbog subclade of Svarog clade. Special operations Troika shall have mandate in Subornos for advancing time grave communion with clades assembled and subclades militant to realize the accepted noema of extirpation of corrupted Narania and hive linking within the flow of Viraj, the domain of Buyan, and the ancient domains. I don't think it went very well. What what's going on here? Okay, so it it is worded very it is pretty uh, worded specifically. So okay, convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle, who we met earlier, uh, received a prayer from the detached executive Troika for the sublimation of Poshloth's flow. Long name, we can shorten it to Zoria Triglav. So. Uh, Zoria Triglov sends a request or prayer to the convocation of Triglov outside of the struggle to for the evolution of the procession flow, winnowing discourses, operating in elements. So this is something that every single fourth record involves a request of the winnowing of the discourses involving that element. The word winnowing means to separate the wheat from the chaff, right? So basically this is saying, hey... I ne we need to go back through all of our discourses about Sancha and come up with a decision. You know, sort things out and get things uh, settled. We need to be able to move forward on the subject. And this is, again, done in every single one of the number fours. Uh, and in every other case besides this one, 
a decision kind of gets made right away and they go with forward with it. But in this case, they don't. But the second line doesn't actually seem to be referring to exactly the same thing as the first line. The first line is a request, a request for the evolution of the procession flow winnowing discourse. It's a decision to be made. The second line says that the convocation denies the relief of prayer from detached executive Troika for expanded uh, mandate in subornos concerning corruption of hive-linking and corrupted neuronia. Con- convocation invokes special mandate for advancing time evoked, evoked operational Troika. So, uh, relief of prayer is kind of a confusing statement. So, this could actually mean that either they were denied their ability, th- like they requested to be able to deal with Sancha and have, like, killing Sancha be part of their mandate, or uh, they were denied the fact that they didn't want to, right? Uh, uh, they, they asked to be relieved from the request. Um, like, or they, uh, they, they asked for relief of prayer for the expanded mandate and subornos concerning the corruption of Hive Lincoln cor- foreign Narania. But that was denied. Either way, uh, what's important here is that the next thing that the convocation does is that they create a new special operations troika. The convocation invokes special mandate for advancing time. Advancing time means future. Evoked operational troika. And then they define that troika. Convocation of Triglov outside of the struggle by imperative evokes special operations troika. So now we have the detached executive troika. We have the special operations strike. Shall uh, for extirpation of corrupted Narania from Dazbog subclade of Svarog clade. Now, once again, there are two ways to interpret this. There's the boring way, where you say that the Dazbog subclade, who have proven themselves to have killed Sancha now twice are the ones that have been chosen to take on the special operations to extirpate the corrupted Narania. But there's a second and far more interesting interpretation, which is that it's saying that the special operations Trika is ordered to extirpate the corrupted Narania of Dazbog subclade. So, if the first and third reports were false, if Dazbog failed to prevent themselves from being corrupted by Sancha and simply reported that they were fine, then there would need to be a special operations strike created to deal with this very specific situation. So... The question that we have as we move forward is which one of those two is it? Special operational Troika shall have mandate and subornos for advancing type grave communion with clades assembled in subject militant to realize the accepted neuroma of extirpation of corrupted neurania. This is your first clue. This is saying that their mandate is in subornos or in partnership with their uh, their also their future their their uh, ongoing thing to be in grave communion with the clades assembled and subclades mil- militant to realize the accepted no- noem of extirpation of corrupted neurania. So here's the thing. This, if, if you interpret this as the mandate as special operations strike for the extirpation of corrupted neurania, and that's from the Dazbog subclade as Farag clade, the extirpation of corrupted Narania is already a thing that they do. In fact, it's what they say that they have to do down here when they're working with the clades assembled in subclades militant. So that seems to imply that their main mission might be related to something else. Their mandate is in connection they have a mandate in connection with this but they have their own mandate 
and they're trying to uh, uh, purge the corruption from the flow of Viraj, the domain of Bouillon, and the ancient domains. Now, the flow of Viraj, well, let's go with this. The ancient domains means, oh, seven, Jeff. The ancient domains is known space. We know that pretty much for a fact uh, due to later reports and, you know, the Zori Chiglop video. Uh, the flow of Viraj, first of all, the F in flow isn't capitalized, which makes me believe that it's not a proper noun. So flow of Viraj isn't a place or thing. It is a flow, kind of like the uh, procession flow here, but this is the Viraj means heaven, the flow of Viraj. So that goes into like their idea of their shared destiny, right? Um, they constantly are referring to the flow of Viraj. So if that's true, then the flow of Viraj would be like the combined group of people that are all within that one effort. So this seems to imply that there's corruption of hive linking within the flow of Viraj, as well as the domain of Bouillon and the ancient domains. The domain of Bouillon appears to be, or seems to be, an area of trig-controlled space that we have not been to yet. That the abyss seems to be like a border to something, and there's another place that we may one day go, because the Triglavians have offered to the Kybernauts that if they are uh, you know, glorified, that they could be accepted into the domain of Bouillon. So, uh, yeah... Weird, right? Okay. So, as we move on, we now have to say that uh, HFN 5 and 6, very different than the previous ones. These are ongoing records, so they are broken up way differently, we're, and we're going to have to stagger our way through it a little bit differently. Uh, so, if those guys got corrupted and kept it quiet, then does it propagate, and how deep does the, goes the corruption? So, the anti sancha zealots may be corrupting themselves without knowing. Uh... R right. So, my theory, spoilers, or, you know, like, to, to kind of finish it, my theory is that the Dosbog subclade and the Sparrow clade specifically have been corrupted. But let's keep going. Here we go. So, in 5 and 6, in all of these reports, it's always, like, reports from the, uh, well, in every other case, it's the Detach executive troika for the extirpation, or sorry, the detached executive, uh, detached executive troika for the su for sublimation of posh lost flow or Zoya Triglav, reporting and talking to the convocation of tri uh, of uh, or no, no no it's just the dialectical semiosis flow, so but in this case it is actually special operations troika. So I'm not going to read the whole thing because. Uh, it's broken into more logical chunks than that. So, Hive Link for Narania, with the division, encountered augmented human entities in non -single man singleton formats, have met diagnostic threshold for multiverite dimensions triggering countervailing imperatives. This is simply saying that the Hive Link for Narania, and this is almost like a detail about it, right? It's like Almost like you would type in Hive Link for Narania and hit enter, and this is what spits out as a response. And it's saying that these are augmented human entities that are non-singleton format. In other words, uh, they're, 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 there's more than one there, and they're all connected. That's the Hive Link, right? They're, they're not individuals. They're a collective. Um, and they're... They had met di diagnostic thresholds uh, in multiple dimensions that show that they are hive-linked, and therefore, this has triggered countervailing imperatives, i.e., uh, the demand to, to resist against them, to fight back. Countervailing means to resist, is put, uh, hit force with force. Uh, all right, reverse time to... Uh, now... Five and six are often divided into past, present, future record, like records. So uh, um, they they say the kind of the subject title, which would be in this case Hyperlink for Narania. Then there's the past record, the uh, or element, the now time element, and the advancing time element. So the reverse time discourse element, past conduit loop constructs and exclaves outside of the proving, outside the proving have penetrated have penetrated by entities corrupted by hive linking. 
with a with another break that says imperative mandate invoked by convocation of Triglov outside of the struggle. So, uh, the conduit loop constructs and exclaves outside of the proving have been entered by the by these things and corrupted. We know this. This is like the multi-body tracking pylon and whatnot, but this does imply that it's a bigger deal than just that one. The imperative uh, mandate invoked by the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle is what you saw in the last record, which was the imperative uh, or the, the mandate to create the special operations strike. Now time discourse element indecipherable. Archived comparison profile, query in code, Jovian Triglavian satellite polity, identity, uh, JNBZX12T7, category hybrid, subcategory hive mind, iteration 1 point, or point 0.1, point 0.2, point question mark, or iteration 1, 2, question mark. Recode process, indecipherable, resolution of case JN, uh, JTNBZ. X twelve T seven TAC EKO TAC three recorded as total extirpation of polity with program of integrity checking and immolation for contacts. Uh, okay, stick with me here. Uh, so what they're basically doing here, it would seem, is that they are comparing the profile that they have here, i.e., what the the the, the, what the information that they've collected about Sancha, and they're comparing it with an archived profile. In other words, they're encountering a hive-linked foreign, or they're 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 dealing with hive-linked neuronia, and so they're comparing it to the last time they did. Right. So. Remember, it's an ancient noema. There's something that happened in the in the long ago history of the Triglavian Collective that made them hate hive linking. So they look it up. It is uh, the Jovian Triglavian satellite polity. Polity means sa uh, society. Identity blah. Category hybrid. Subcategory hive mind. Iteration 1.2. Question mark. The question mark would be like, uh, it's like a wild card, right? Any any of the iterations of 1.2, which would be like the second phase of 1. So, Jovian Triglavian Satellite Polity, first and foremost. That's a that's a big one. Um, let me put back on the alert box. Thanks for the follow. Um, okay. So... It would seem that once upon a time, the Triglavians and the jo jo Jovians had a satellite society that was of the category of hybrid and the subcategory of hive mind. I, I will. You're right. You're right. No, no, totally. Thanks for calling me out. Let's do this. One last time. Exclamation point. Plunder. Let's do this. Last chances. T Res, nineteen eighty one. Thank you for joining us down the rabbit hole, Jeeve Online. Okay, so uh, it's going to be what was this month's scope thing? It's a uh, it's the Stratios, right? I believe we got Stratios skins this time. So I'm going to be doing a, a poll for two of the Stratios. Uh, uh, scope syndication skins as a thank you for the uh, earlier hype train. Am I, yeah, there it is. Abel, thank you. All right, so let's pull it. I'm closing it. Too late. Closing it. Oh, good. Single player got in my last second, so I don't have to reopen it. All right. Pulling in. Three, two, one. Droppy. Say something. 
<laughs> yeah, after the last, there is a lot of skins coming out in there uh, in the event. You've got about 10 more seconds, Droppy. Otherwise, I'm going on without you. Actually, what we'll do is I'm going to pull the second person and then uh, see if he gets back in time. So we're going to pull it again. Oh, not in chat? Well, it suck. Sucks to suck. All right, pulling in three, two, one. Patient Stalker 2021. Are you here? While we're waiting on that, I'll pull it again. Three, two, one. Drakenhoff. Drakenhoff. All right. Next. Three, two, one. We did actually lose a lot of people. So, like, uh, and some people have dropped off throughout. So, there may actually be a, a lot of pulls. Hmm. If I'm if I pull one more time, then what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna close it, reopen it, and like let everybody do it real quick for like a minute, and then do it. All right. So, oh, Draken off. There he is. Draken wins. So that's one. Never mind. We're going. We're going for it. Let's get the second one. Three, two, one. TC Belding. Eh? Is he here? <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Remy Main. There we go. Okay, we have our two winners. Dragon off Remy Main, both of you. If you can DM me or uh, we'll, uh, right after the stream, I will uh, we'll discuss the. Uh, I'll get you the codes and all that stuff. Cool. Uh, who? Who's here? Yeah, we got the two winners, right? Okay. We didn't have one of the guys show up at, 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 after all, did we? No, okay, good. All right. Moving right along. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, I need to actually check my... No, I don't see any new messages. She also didn't check, so... Who knows? So we're now playing by ear. I may have to go at any minute, but we're going to see how far we can get into this. So, uh, all right. So there's only one satellite polity that I know of that would be of the category hybrid and subcategory hive mind. Uh, and that would be the sleeper civilization. The sleepers... Uh, modified themselves to make them parts of their body, specifically uh, the a fourth lobe of their brain, uh, to be integrated with a computer so that way they could create their virtual reality construct to live in. And they're wired together in a hive mind in order to do so. So this seems to suggest that this is part of the sleepers. And it puts it at iteration 1.2, so later in the first Jovian Empire, we be, or I believe. Uh, later or in the Drifter one, they refer to Jovian society iteration 2. Dot something, which would be the second Jovian Empire. So this seems to suggest that the Triglavians may have been involved in some way in the creation or in the early days of what we now know of as the Sleeper Society. However, it is very clear that from the Triglavians' point of view, something has gone terribly, terribly wrong. The result of it was that they recorded it as total extirpation of the polity, the society, with a program of integrity checking and the emulation and emulation for contacts. So not only did they, they destroy 
the civilization itself, but they went and hunted down anyone who 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 is contacted or who is in contact with or somehow attached to that polity and destroyed them too. Serious stuff. Remember, they're looking this up to look to figure out what to do about Sanchez Nation and their corrupting of Triglavian equipment and people. So, yeah, this is this is a pretty clear indicator of of something going on during the early days of the Jovian Empire, pre shrouded days. Um, and could be the early early days of the formation of the Triglavian Collective. Depending on how you interpret it, this could be seen as a sign that the uh, Triglavians are, in fact, the Talican, but I would not say that we have enough evidence for that. Uh, all right. The Koshoi, which again is kind of like the people in charge, have evoked profound consideration of this noema for advancing time flow outcomes. Uh, yeah, the Talican are the ones that created the uh, the Dyson Swarm that basically constructed uh, wormhole space. They uh, they are so like um, the Jovians say. Uh, Venal describes them as being like as as far beyond them as as they 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 turn the Talos of the of the universe to their will. Uh, and that we can only be thankful that they're no longer here. And their records, uh, their remains can be found in uh, in wormhole space with uh, with sleeper sites or sleeper uh, equipment or sh- structures kind of nestled in within. All right. Advancing time discourse element. So this is now the future part. So in the future, effective action for elimination of hive, line, hive mind corruption should not be hindered by imperative for future sampling, further, further sampling. We no longer need to evaluate these guys. We can just assume that they're bad and kill them. I have a document known as the Precursor Crisis. Hold on, let me pull that up. And on the YouTube, I've also created a, a playlist of every video that CCP and Airtaka Research Consortium has come out with that is on this topic. Uh, the Precursor Crisis is the title that I give to kind of the arc of sleepers, drifters, triglavians, all that shit, which seems to be like uh, the meta of it seems to be that we are eval- we are learning more about uh, – the, what happened during the shrouded days? What took down the second Jovian Empire? Because whatever it is, it seems to have spun out to become the sleepers and then later drifters and, and whatnot. And then uh, from the other side, the Triglavian Collective was uh, trapped in, in, into the abyss at around that time too. So something happened and it was bad. Uh, okay. Advancing time discourse element. Effective action for eliminating hive mind corruption should not... Oh, yeah. Uh, Special Operations Troika has mandate for ex- extirpation of corruption of hive linking where manifested, uh, not limited to physical presence of hive linking augmentation, and shall include informational biocoding, mimetic corruption, and perverse ideologies. Extirpation of posh loss undoubted. Okay. So they're saying that the corruption of hive linking can go beyond the presence of actual hive linking augmentation and includes informational biocoding, which I don't quite understand that one. Mimetic corruption, mimetic, it, you know, memes, right? We, we like to say it's just a meme, but what a meme is, is it's, it's a message that has, uh, that who, who, which meaning is derived from a cultural like interpretation, right? Um, so what this is basically saying is that messaging, propaganda, corruption, uh, and perverse ideologies. So ideologies that are favorable to the uh, the Sancha or whatever. Um, it's a bit weird. There's a lot of ways to interpret this. 
one of them is that it's believed that uh, the Triglavians see the corruption of Sancha far broader than just the nation themselves. But this also could suggest uh, more about their internal investigation, as it were. And they will be, uh, they will extirpate those undoubted to be corrupt. HFN 6. Special operations strike up for the extirpation of corrupt in Narania. Dialectical semiosis flow, indecipherable follows. By the way, the fact that it's called a dialectical se- semiosis flow seems to imply that these breaks are messages back and forth, potentially. Uh, Hivelink for Narania. Encountered or augmented human entities with non singleton format have coercive, transactional, and ideological relationships with augmented for Narania in singleton formats. So this is basically just calling it out that uh, the the Sanchez Nation folks seem to have a controlling, transactional, and ideological relationship with capsuleers. There are capsuleers that work with Sancha. That's that's basically what they're what they're identifying. Uh, oops. Highly perverse ideological mappings have been described after analysis of augmented foreign neuradias. Naradnia's mimetic transactions. So uh, they see they see us as uh, as potentially highly corrupt uh, by but when evaluating our our communications, our memes. The Koshoi of the Paramount Strategic Troika of Clade Svarog has submitted a prayer for relief of convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. Uh, so. This actually kind of gives a suggestion as to what prayer of relief could be. This seems to suggest that, like, Clade Sfarog is dealing with this problem, and they're praying for help. They're asking for help. So going back to HFN4, we can say that, uh, oh, well, this is a relief of pa- prayer. What's the difference between a relief of prayer and a prayer of relief? I don't know. We'll find, who knows? All right. Now time discourse element. Preparation of special operations strika capabilities ongoing in parallel to the requirement to requirements of detached executive strika for sublimation of posh loss flow. So the special operations strika, the the preparation for their operation and what they need to do it, their capabilities, are going to be happening in parallel with the, with Zoria Triglov which we know now is the preparation for invasion, right? Zoria Triglov led the invasion. So they're saying that they're going to prepare for this special operations operation uh, operation, uh, in uh, in parallel to the plans for invasion. But material and energy priority for Zoria Triglov is established. The detached executive troika has a higher priority. Under expanded mandate and subordinates of t- detached executive troika. So based on the expanded mandate uh, that is in conjunction or uh, partnership with or par- uh, under the detached executive troika, they have uh, priority for uh, the materials and, and support from the collective to get that done taken care of first. Advancing time discourse element. Responses to widespread and deep hive-linking corruption by augmentation, biocoding, mimetic, and ideological vectors must be uncompromising. Indecipherable. Special operations strika will realize accepted noema. Unexce- uh, indecipherable. Task of Kreznik Svarog is to pur- purge corruption, achieve integrity, and insist on the emulation of the perverse. Indecipherable. No glorification, nor yet mortification, only extirpation of the posh lost undoubted. Okay. So, it would seem that their analysis to see how spread the corruption goes was that it's in fact uh, very widespread, both in uh, augmentation or in in. Augmentation, biocoding, mimetic, and ideological vectors. Uh, and it must be, uh, must be t- uh, dealt with uncompromisingly. 
which is weird that you would think that they would need to compromise. But now, Special Operations, Special Operations Troika will realize the accepted Noema, but we're not given the name of the Noema. That's weird. Most of the indecipherables are always like part of a discourse element or a space-time thing. Um, but the indecipherable at the beginning and end of the Special Operations Troika line seems out of place uh, otherwise. Task of Kreznik Svarog is to... Pr so who's Kreznik Svarog? Well, it's pretty obvious, uh, but it's still kind of a theory. So the detached executive Troika is named Zoria Triglov. And Zoria Triglov specifically specifies... Specifically specifies. Awesome. Specifies that they come from... They are an emanation of all three clades. The clades of Perun, Svarog, and Velez. However... If the if the uh, special operations troika is drawn from Svarog, then the special operations troika's name would have the last name of Svarog, in the same way that Zoria Triglov has the last name of Triglov. So we assume that this is a statement about the actual mandate, the instructions to Kreznik Svarog which is to purge corruption, achieve integrity, and ins insist on the emulation of the perverse. And this goes back and fortifies that idea that this is different than just the extirpation of the, po uh, of the hive linking, right? Purging corruption, purging it from what? Achieving integrity, in achieving integrity with whom? And insisting of the emulation of the perverse within what? Right? So, to interpret this as the Sancha, you almost have to be, like say that Triglavians have noted that Sancha's corruption, or what they see as Sancha's corruption, is widespread in New Eden. And so, like... It, they're supposed to hunt down and, pur and cr purge any corruption throughout all of the different uh, em empires, etc. Uh, even not uh, even outside of Sancha, the the capsuleers that work with Sancha, etc. But why would they be achieving integrity within that external group? You achieve integrity in t within a unit, right? So if we look at this as saying that, well, there's a Svarog problem, and so they have a Svarog s a solution. Oh, shoot, there's the door. Yep, I'm going to have to wrap this up. Hold on. All right. Uh, okay. So I got to wrap this up. But um, okay. So if we have a Svarog pro a corruption problem, then uh, it would make sense that the Zoria Triglov isn't given the job of dealing with that. But now there's a special operations Troika from Svarog to handle itself. Um, you know, get get your get your order your your affairs in order more or less, right? Um, so, I believe that this is trying to purge corruption, achieve integrity, and emulation of the perverse internal to Svarog. Which means, some of the times that we see Triglavians, we also, they might not necessarily be Triglavian. Um, they might be Sancha. Which also might explain why we never saw Sancha in the Abyss. Because it could very well be that we encountered Svarog Triglavians that were actually under control of Sancha. Uh, the weird thing about this is, this plot has really never really advanced. Like, there's been, they've kept it alive. Little things happen. Um, but, and the latest thing was... So there's the semiosis consoles where we get where we intercept messages from the Triglavian collective. Um, 
Oh no, is it not going to be here? Okay, well, there's semiosis consoles and that you can get from the abyss, and that is if you have a semiosis console, then uh, you can intercept the Triglavian messages when they get sent out. Uh, it doesn't look like you can just look them up. Um, however, during one of the events, you could get you could get uh, Svarog's modified encrypted um, uh, semiosis console which seemed to imply that it has extra fortifications against corruption. So it's almost as if the Triglavian, uh, the Svarog guys uh, had to develop a semiosis console that they could use that doesn't, uh, that can't necessarily be hacked as easily by, uh, by Sancha. And, <laughs> am I in Hawaii? I mean, uh, it's appearing so more and more. But as I said, I was going to have to leave when uh, they showed up, and they have showed up. So let's go ahead and find a raid. I have been Ashrothy. I've been playing this game since 2010, talking about it since 2012, and I've been here. And I'm here to put Eve into context for you, my fellow Empyreans. If you like uh, what I do, if you ch if this was a cool thing to do, uh, don't, don't, no, 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 that's actually ne needed. Um, uh, you can, you know, please, of course, follow. Go to my YouTube. And uh, hit subscribe over there, so that way you can check out all my videos. I put archives over there uh, from the streams and all that stuff, just in case you miss something, because I mostly stream in the morning, uh, USTZ. Um, if you want to support the stream, of course, you can subscribe to the Twitch and get all those cool emotes. Uh, you can support me on my Patreon and get my eternal love and support, and get listed on all of my videos as I release them for just a dollar a month. Uh, all that said, let's go and find somebody to raid. Hey, that's that's a YouTube. I, I, I still need to add something to that. Oh, is this is. Hold on. Wait, CCP raid, raided me and then went live again. Okay. Uh, quick, should I raid CCP or New Eden Post between key, two keep stars? Is two, between two keep stars still going? What's it? What is? This, what, where are they at? True. That yeah, is, well, that's well, admirable. Well, I, that, they'll defend their renters. Uh, they've been going for an hour. Is this almost over? I I think we're gonna do CCP, but I just want to see because we're an hour in. So like other blocks when it comes to renters and that comes from entering the systems and messing with renters a bit but I must preface that with I haven't been messing with frat renters lately because of the aforementioned uh, if objectionable uh, agreement and so I just go look for other renters to mess with so but it does seem like uh, that they scramble pretty quickly for okay we're rating CCP Thanks for, thank you all for watching and until next time I'll see you in space Winners, please make sure to DM me because I'm going to have to take care of it in like an hour, probably.
Sitting.